Deserts are known for their extreme ranges of temperature and being some of the driest places on Earth. These regions often have temperatures as high as 55 degrees Celsius during the day, but can go down to below zero degrees at night. They also receive less than 200 millimeters of rainfall per year on average. There are a number of deserts across our planet, but most of them can be found in the torrid zone around the equator that cuts across the planet horizontally. Some of these include the Thar Desert in India, the Gobi Desert in Mongolia, the Great Australian Desert, and of course the massive Sahara Desert in Africa. Most of you will be familiar with the Sahara Desert, the largest and most well-known desert in the world that stretches across most of North Africa, leaving it uninhabitable. However, did you know there's another desert that is even drier than the Sahara? And because of this, it receives less rainfall than any other place on the planet. Even though it may seem unbelievable, this is a reality in the Atacama Desert, known as the driest place on Earth. The Atacama Desert can be found in South America, located right next to the mighty Andes mountain range. It stretches down to the western portion of South America, close to the coastline, sandwiched between the Andes on one side and the Chilean mountain range on the other. In terms of temperatures, the Atacama is on average, in fact, not as extreme as other deserts, with an average temperature of only about 24 degrees Celsius throughout the year. For comparison, the Thar Desert can hit temperatures above 50 degrees Celsius during the summer months. However, in terms of lack of rainfall, no desert can compare to the Atacama. It only receives 15 millimeters of rainfall per year on average. For context, 15 millimeters of rainfall is the amount of rainfall that the city of New York gets on a single day when it's rainy. Due to this lack of moisture, the Atacama Desert has another unique feature. Its sands have a reddish hue due to what is often said to resemble the surface of Mars, the red planet. It is for this reason that the epic space movie 2001 A Space Odyssey used the Atacama Desert as the location for shooting when they were filming scenes meant to be on the Red Planet. The Atacama Desert is also one of the oldest regions on Earth, and some experts theorize that it could be over 140 million years old. If this is true, it's been around longer than the Himalayas, which only began to form around the same time. Even though this is not definite, it's known for a fact that the Atacama Desert has experienced these hyper-arid conditions for over 3 million years, making it, without a doubt, the oldest desert on Earth. But why is the Atacama Desert the driest place on Earth? And why has it experienced these conditions for so long? Well, that's what this video is all about. Stick around and learn all about it. Hi there, and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel as it only takes a moment. All right, now that that's done, let's get to it. In this next part of the video, we shall look into the reasons for the Atacama Desert being the driest desert in the world. Here are a few factors that work together to create these extreme conditions that are prevalent in this region. These include its location and the winds, the ocean currents, and the neighboring mountain ranges. All of these factors play a part in making this desert unbearably dry. Let's look at them each in detail. Reason number one, its location and the winds. The first reason for the formation of this desert, and in fact this is the most common factor for all deserts, is the geographical zone in which it's found. The Atacama Desert, like most of the world's deserts, lies between the subtropical high-pressure zone. But what is this zone, and why does it turn the regions within it into deserts? Well, we'll explain just that. The subtropical high-pressure zones are generally found between 20 and 40 degrees of latitude in both the southern and northern hemispheres of the Earth. The characteristic features of these zones, from which they get their name, is that they have very high atmospheric pressure. But how do high-pressure zones lead to deserts? Well, to explain it simply, the high pressure in these areas cause the wind to be pushed downward towards the surface of the Earth. When the winds are pushed down, water vapor is unable to rise up and form clouds. Due to a lack of clouds, there is obviously a lack of rain, and the lack of rain in these regions leads to the formation of deserts across the subtropical high-pressure zones. The Atacama Desert also lies largely between the 20 and 40 degree latitudes in the southern hemisphere, right in the middle of a subtropical high-pressure zone, which is a huge reason for its extremely dry climate. Reason number two, the cold ocean current. The Atacama Desert lies very close to the western coast of South America. 
Due to this, it's fully affected by the ocean current that flows along the coastline known as the Peru or Humboldt Current. What are ocean currents? Well, to put it simply, they're the continuous directional movement of seawater brought about due to the number of factors including winds, salinity differences, temperatures, etc. There are largely two types of ocean currents, which are based on the temperature of the flowing water, hot and cold currents. They both affect the nearby land masses in different ways, in terms of altering their climate. The Peru or Humboldt Ocean Current is a cold water current and is another key reason for the dry climate of the Atacama Desert. Cold and warm ocean currents play a major role in affecting the climate of different regions of our planet. Cold water currents are formed due to the upward movement of cold water from the depths of the ocean towards its surface. This results in a flow of cold water at the surface of the ocean, which interacts with the air above the ocean current. The cold water cools down the atmosphere above the surface of the ocean and results in warmer air higher up. This warmer air leads to fog and the formation of stratus clouds, but these types of clouds do not bring any rainfall. The fact that the Atacama Desert is so close to the coastline and the cold Peru current is a major reason for its dry climate. The winds that blow in from the west over the Pacific Ocean are cooled by the current and the clouds that manage to make it to the region bring little or no rainfall. However, in reality, most of the clouds do not even reach the desert. Why is that? Well, that's the next reason. Reason number three, the double rain shadow. You may remember from the beginning of the video that we said the Atacama Desert is sandwiched between two mountain ranges, the Chilean Mountains on one side and the Andes on the other. And while at the time you may have not thought much of that, except perhaps that it was an interesting geographical feature, this actually also plays a major role in making the Atacama Desert the driest place on Earth. Why is that? Well, it's because of the rain shadow that these mountain ranges provide. Mountain ranges all over the world are the cause of rain shadow phenomenon, and the fact that the Atacama Desert has two ranges on both its west and east sides means the amount of rain it receives is extremely minimal. So how does the rain shadow work? Well, as you know, clouds that bear rain are carried by winds across the lands, and they break and provide rainfall when they're too full of water vapor or when they strike a tall landmass. Well, mountain ranges are the tallest land masses we have on the planet, and they act as barriers to these rain-bearing clouds which strike them and break providing rainfall on one side of the ranges. The problem for the regions on the other side that lie within the rain shadow is that they lie on the wrong side of the mountain ranges. The Himalayas in Asia are a big reason the monsoon winds do not blow northward into Mongolia, which is why the Gobi Desert was formed. In the case of the Atacama Desert, if there are any rain-bearing clouds sweeping in from the west from over the Pacific, which is rare due to the cold current already discussed, they strike the Chilean mountains and shed their rainfall on the western side of this range before they can reach the Atacama Desert. From the other eastern side, there are actually winds that carry clouds dense with rainfall that water the mighty Amazon forest. However, once these clouds have swept across South America, they reach the Andes mountain range and break against its eastern side, dropping the last of their rain on the eastern side of the range. The Atacama Desert, therefore, does not receive much rainfall due to the fact that it lies in a double rain shadow region, another important factor that influences its status as the driest place on Earth. From what we have explained, it should be clear now how these three factors come together to make the Atacama Desert the driest region anywhere on this planet. You're probably thinking that there would be no life or beauty in this area due to lack of water to support it. However, this is not the case because about once a decade, something absolutely amazing happens in the desert. El Nino is a phenomenon that takes place every five to seven years, and it involves the warming of the Peru or Humboldt current, which turns it from a cold water current to a warm water one. This rare occurrence brings above average rainfall to the west coast of South America, and the countries of Peru and Chile rely on it greatly to boost their agriculture. 
However, it does something else as well when this happens. It brings rain to the Atacama Desert, and this results in something completely unexpected. The rains cause native flowers that lie dormant for years to bloom across the desert, bringing beauty and vibrant life to an area that is usually only known for its bleak and dreary appearance. Though the desert usually only blooms once every few years, 2022 was the first time that it erupted into life for a second year running, after already flowering in 2021. Experts believe that with the effects of climate change, this region may experience this outbreak of life even more often in the future. It also serves to draw in tourists who come in large numbers to see the rare occurrence. The government of Chile is already planning to turn a section of this desert, once thought uninhabitable, into a national park to protect and preserve this beauty. This is truly one of the most magnificent sights to behold, as in a landscape known for its dull and never-changing appearance, suddenly there is an outbreak of vivid color and vibrancy. It stands as proof to the resilience of life, and how, even in the darkest of times, if hope is not lost, then life will find a way. And there you have it, folks. We hope you found this video informative and that you learned something new today. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, then subscribe to the channel as we're always coming out with content on cool topics just like this one from all around the world. Also, make sure to hit that like button and leave us a comment down below if you know anything that could have been added to the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.